Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we're going to be talking about household items that every prepper should be stockpiling. Many household items that you should stockpile are ones that you would use in the kitchen. One example of this is aluminum foil and in addition to making stylish hats, aluminum foil is also useful when grilling, making campfire dinners, or lining pans to make them easier to clean up later on. Paper plates and bowls are also good to have around since they can help you reduce the amount of water you'll need to use to clean dishes. I prefer paper plates and bowls over plastic since they can be burned, but be careful when doing this because some of them have coatings on them. Paper cups are useful for the same reason along with plasticware, just don't try to burn plasticware because it's plastic. Can openers are another thing that preppers should stockpile, and of course there are ways to open cans without them, some are safer than others, but using a manual can opener is safer, easier, and doesn't rely on electricity. Hand crank models are nice, but it's also a good idea to have a good stash of P38 or multi-tool can openers as well in case those hand crank models break. Lighters are good to have on hand since they allow you to start fires or light camp stoves. Small lighters are good to keep in bags or kits, while longer grill style lighters are good around the house. Strike Anywhere matches are good to have as well. Along those same lines, preppers should also stockpile charcoal and lighter fluid if they plan on using that kind of grill. Just be aware that grilling, especially with charcoal, is very noticeable because of the smell and smoke that it produces. So if there are any security concerns, that is a method of cooking you definitely want to avoid. You also need to make sure that you have plenty of manual kitchen tools like egg beater mixers and whisks along with cast iron cookware. Cast iron can be used to cook in pretty much any environment whether you're browning meat on your stovetop or trying to make a stew in the wilderness. Preppers should also stockpile plenty of dish soap to clean cookware and kitchen utensils. Just don't let it anywhere near your cast iron. Like Ever. And of course, while storing beans, rice, and other shelf-stable foods, it's pretty obvious, you also need to have things like cooking oil and yeast that are essential for preparing certain foods like bread. If you're into canning, make sure that you have plenty of jars, rings, lids, and any other accessories that you may need, and water containers are another item you should stockpile. Aquatainers are nice since they have a spigot that you can use to dispense water into a cup, or as a faucet for washing into a sink or over the edge of a table outside. If you have a water filter like a Berkey, make sure that you have some extra filtering elements for it. The next group of items that you should stockpile are cleaning and sanitation supplies, the first of which being trash bags. While it's a good idea to have some extra kitchen sized bags on hand, the majority of your trash bags should be heavy duty contractor bags. These are stronger than other kinds of trash bags and can be used as ponchos, pack liners, makeshift tarps, and can even help collect rainwater. Hardware stores are a good place to pick these up. Bleach is another essential item for preppers to store, but make sure that you purchase plain disinfecting bleach. Other kinds of bleach, like most of the ones seen here, contain additional chemicals that make them unsuitable for some tasks, most notably water purification. You don't need your drinking water smelling like lemon, and you don't need no splash chemicals lurking around in it. The next thing that you should stockpile are sanitizing wipes. These were one of the first things to get scooped up in 2020 and are very useful for keeping numerous surfaces around your house clean. Disinfecting wipes can also help you reduce the amount of water that you use for cleaning since they're already moist. Five gallon buckets have numerous survival uses and many of them involve keeping your home or clothing clean. You can use them to hold cleaning chemicals while you're cleaning stuff up and you can even use them as things like manual washing machines if you have a snap-on lid and a plunger. One thing that will be extremely important in a long-term disaster is pest control. Insects and rodents can cause damage to your property and can also spread disease. Because of this, you need to have what you need to prevent and deal with infestations. For pesticides, get those that will protect your home in addition to sprays that will help keep bugs off of you and your clothing. Rat poison is another thing you should keep on hand along with different kinds of traps. Rat and mouse traps will help take care of smaller vermin while larger traps can help you deal with larger pests like raccoons. You can also use them as hunting traps, but never do that if the animal could have been exposed to poison. And also if you use poison, definitely keep that away from kids. And of course, it goes without saying that you should stock plenty of toilet paper and paper towels. While they are mainly convenience items that do have easy substitutes, they can help limit the amount of water that you use and make your life a little easier. The next group of items that preppers should stockpile are hygiene items. Keeping your body clean will prevent diseases and can also be a big morale booster. 
Having a good collection of different kinds of soap and shampoo is a good start. It's also important to note that during a long-term disaster, soap and shampoo will be seen as luxury items that can be used for bartering. Hand sanitizer is another stockpile item that can help keep your hands clean. Having a few large bottles along with some small travel size ones will help you keep your hands clean whether you're at home or away. Wet wipes are a good thing to have also since both they and hand sanitizer can help reduce the amount of water that you use to stay clean. Dental problems can be debilitating so every prepper should have a good stockpile of toothbrushes, toothpaste, and dental floss, and mouthwash is good to have also. If you're a woman or live with one, having a stockpile of feminine hygiene products is an absolute must. Be sure to have plenty of clothing for different times of the year and all sorts of weather. It should be in good condition and still fit. If you've gained 50 pounds since you loaded your clothes into your bug out bag, go ahead and take a look at that. Also, take a look at your footwear and make sure that it will be suitable for a long-term disaster where you will likely be doing more manual labor and spending more time on your feet. If you have small children, stockpile diapers. Just be aware that if a situation lasts long enough, you're going to eventually run out or your child will outgrow the ones that you have. Because of this, it's a good idea to have a stash of reusable cloth diapers in different sizes also. The next group of household items that preppers should be stockpiling revolves around heating and lighting. If you have a wood-burning fireplace or wood stove, firewood is essential. But even if you have a smaller stove, like something you'd use in the outdoors, like a rocket stove, Kelly kettle, or some other type of like twig stove, having a stash of small sticks and branches is a good idea also. If you have a generator, make sure that you have plenty of fuel for it. Most generators run on gasoline, but some can run on propane and other fuel sources as well. Try to have enough fuel that you can keep your generator running for at least a couple of weeks, but be sure to do it safely. In general, propane is going to be easier to store than gasoline, and it lasts a very long time, but gasoline can also be used to keep your vehicle running if you need it to, so it's a good idea to have at least some gasoline set aside even if you don't have a generator. Also stockpile additional fuel sources that you can use for things like camp stoves or heaters. These can include things like one pound propane bottles, butane canisters, and denatured alcohol just depending on the specific appliances you own. If using a larger propane cylinder with a buddy heater, be sure to get a good hose and a filter to prevent damage to the heater. Candles are also good to stockpile since they're so cheap. They won't give off as much light as an LED lantern or flashlight, but they can help you see well enough that you don't run into something. Oil lamps and hurricane lanterns are nice to have also. They burn a little brighter than a candle and their flame is enclosed, which can be a little safer, but if you're going to use those, have additional wicks, have plenty of lamp oil, and when using anything with an open flame, be sure to have a fire extinguisher nearby and make sure that you can keep your smoke alarms running long term. If you have propane lanterns, be sure to store several packages of mantles for each one. Those can get damaged easily, so get enough to last you for a while. Preppers should also stockpile plenty of batteries to keep small electronics working. While purchasing traditional alkaline batteries can be cheaper in the beginning, rechargeable batteries can last for years and be used over and over again. If you have a solar generator, they're a great way to ensure that your small devices can run for a very long time. USB battery banks are also good items to stockpile since they can help keep devices running for at least some time if you aren't able to use your generator or if you don't have one at all. I use this one by Anchor to keep my camera running and have used it to charge other devices also and I've been pretty happy with it. Also be sure to stockpile plenty of flashlights. I recommend having one or two good flashlights or headlamps per adult and at least one cheapie per room. The good flashlights can be used for EDC while the cheapies can be kept in drawers or inside of closets. The next set of items that preppers should stockpile are things that can help you maintain or repair your home, gear, or equipment. Hand tools like saws and even manually powered tools like braces and bits and egg beater drills would be extremely beneficial if you weren't able to keep your power tools up and running. You should also have a good stockpile of fasteners, especially nails and screws. Nails are even more important if you know that you won't be able to keep power tools running long term since they're easier to use. Hitting something with a hammer a few times is a lot easier than turning a 3 inch deck screw into a 2x4 using a regular screwdriver. Lumber is also good to have on hand since it will allow you to make repairs and build additional structures or fortifications. Plywood can be purchased and cut ahead of time to cover windows. Wall dimensional lumber like 2x4s can be left as is to be used for whatever you may need it for later on. Just be sure to store it flat to prevent warping. Duct tape has numerous uses and is another thing you should be stockpiling. 
You can use it to make quick repairs, use it as a lashing where water isn't a concern, and even as a fire starter if you don't have anything else because duct tape is flammable. Zip ties are also good to have. Smaller ones work well to make repairs to gear, while larger ones can be used to make temporary repairs to larger structures or equipment, or even as restraints. Super glue and epoxies are good to stockpile since they can be used to make repairs where zip ties or tape aren't really ideal. Some epoxies can even be used on metal and can form a pretty strong bond. Tarps work well as makeshift shelters and can be used temporarily to cover broken windows or holes in your roof. If security is a concern, heavier tarps can be used to cover windows to reduce the amount of light that's visible from outside your home. You don't want to be known as the only person on the block with lights on during a long-term power outage. Rope and paracord are also good to stockpile. Paracord works well for lashing small items together or for attaching gear to your pack, while thicker ropes are a better choice if you need to hoist or pull objects. Plastic sheeting is good to have around since it can be used to collect rainwater or prevent dangerous contaminants from entering your home. It can also be used in the winter to help keep your house a little warmer. If you use painter's tape to attach it to the wall in front of your window, this is going to allow light to enter in but prevent drafts. One thing that many preppers forget to stockpile is spare parts for equipment. Having things like additional air filters or a spare carburetor for like your generator can help keep things running for a very long time. And having sewing supplies and some scrap fabric can help you get the most out of your clothing and can also be used to make repairs to gear like sleeping bags and backpacks. And as y'all were watching the video, y'all probably noticed that I left certain things out. Like I didn't include any specific food items except for like the cooking oil and the yeast. And I left out medications and there were some other things. But if I were to include everything on one video, it would be really honking long. So to see foods that you should be stockpiling, check out this video. And to see medications you should be stockpiling, check out this video. So y'all have a good one. Thanks for stopping by.